can see this coal load is just pulled to a stop right here in town. Now, if this was a freight train, I mean something with rides, it'd be pretty convenient to get off here or on. Being that these are more or less unrideable coal cars, it kind of sucks. So what they're going to do here is put three or maybe four extra engines in the middle of the train to go over Bozeman Pass. These are going to be manned, meaning that there's guys in there that will see you. They're not remote control. It's at this stop here in Livingston that you can get on or off. Going on here though, these trains only stop going west to add engines, pretty much. So I'm gonna need, basically, I, I'm gonna have to hitchhike to go east. It's very sporadic that these trains stop going east because they add helper engines in Bozeman to go over the pass, and those are often detached while the train is moving, coming down the pass. So a lot of the trains coming through here are coal, coming from Wyoming, basically actually going to Canada. And as you can see here, these coal, these coal cars don't really have any place to ride in the ends. You could get in the coal up here, but also that's gonna be filthy. So it's kind of just sucks because you really don't have any work. This one here you kind of could get in. It's got a little area here, but you could, right there you don't really got a lot of space. It's not like a platform. So basically these trains are useless for hobos. Right here you have the Senex refinery where they turn crude into so right now I'm kind of just waiting in Laurel, Montana, which is about 14 miles west of Billings. I'm currently in a spot where I think the trains are crew changing going east, which is where I'm trying to go. Uh, we've got this one here, pretty much been parked all day. I can't really tell what's going on with it. East of town here, there's a pretty substantial rail yard. Right now I'm a little bit west. I don't know if you can tell from here. Probably not, but enormous five direction train yard out of there. You can go to Denver, you can go to South Dakota, you can go to Great Falls, Montana, you can go to Wyoming. So there's a lot of choices. So a lot of folks might be asking, how do you know which direction the train's going, Jim? And it's often a good question. There's a lot of times you can't really tell. But I could point a couple of things out about this one. The fact that it's got loaded wood means it's coming from the west. There's no lumber anywhere east of here that I'm aware of. So that means it's coming from Pasco, Washington, Missoula, Montana, somewhere like that. So I guess what that means is you should first know where the train's not going. This train is not going west out of Laurel. You've got to know, you know, the basics about the industries in the country you need to know where the forests are. Uh, there's no forests uh, in North or South Dakota or Minnesota. All the lumber goes west to east and then possibly south as well. This tanker has got propane or liquefied petroleum gas in it. So if you can determine if it's full or empty, that can help as well. It's a little hard to tell with tankers because they've got double walls. It sounds a little more echoey than a full one, so I'm going to surmise that this is empty and going to be refilled at Billings, where they've got a plant and a refinery. Another indication that this train's probably not going to go east of the train yard without breaking up inside. 3082, 1824. Hydrochloric acid, 1789. This is all at Laurel. This is Amitol, A-M-I-E-T-O-L. And then we've got a 1760 here. This gray, attractively painted, new looking one. Another indicator is who owns the car. These grain hoppers here say DME. That's the rail car owner, which is Dakota, Minnesota, and Eastern. That's a short line 
based out of North Dakota and South Dakota. Therefore, there's a very good chance these rail cars are going to go there too. Box cars such as this one basically have zero uh, identifiable attributes to know where they're going. So obviously, there's a lot more that goes into this as well. But the basics are the type of cargo, who owns the car, and then you can basically determine where it's not going, where it is going, where it could be going, and from there it can give you a better idea. That said, knowing exactly where the train is going is not always possible. Very often it's not, you can't even tell at all because there's not any of these identifiable attributes of any of the rail cars. In that case, it still is a gamble, especially at a junction where the train hits it at high speed. So this is a typical hobo waiting area for the train. This is under the I-90 overpass or the west edge of the Laurel Yard. Checking it out here, you know, you got a place to sleep. It's kind of dirty looking, but it actually looks pretty comfy right now. My feet are killing me. And then just down here, you got the tracks. And you know, it's it's pretty nice. Nice spot in here. Besides being a little dirty, it's out of sight. Uh, you got plenty of privacy. It's probably warm in the winter too. So I'm probably gonna just chill out for a while. Wait until something else shows up. So, you know, I mean, people do come through here. There's definitely evidence of it. I'm not too worried about anybody too dangerous. I mean, it always could happen. But uh, the evidence around here makes me think there's about a couple of people a month and that they're just harmless, dirty kids or old, you know, old timers. I don't really sense there's a, a dangerous group that comes under here because there's, you know, there's no dead bodies or blood or bloody knives or anything like that or threats written here. So I feel pretty safe. It's a little dirty, but my feet are killing me. And I just got this deal on Yellowtail Riesling. This was like six bucks at the gas station. So I'm gonna drink that and kick back. What's your guys' names again? Toes. Katie. Katie and Toes? Yeah. yeah. T O Z E. Oh, oh T O Z E. Oh. Is this you? Yeah. Just nice. See? Okay, so oh, that's really? Katie's. That's Toes. And then the two dogs, we got Ava and Yeah. 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 They're nice animals. Um, yeah stands for Emilius Idrallon Huxley. Emilius is elegant for, or um, Chinese, Chinese for elegant, and it's Urban Dictionary for Dirty Boy. So he fits all the There. <laughs> these, these pooches were not initially friendly because they shouldn't because they're <laughs> secure. Yeah, they were yeah. barking at you. They're reasonable. <laughs> they usually get offended when people walk up to a car. <laughs> But they they're like they know good people. And yeah, this is a sign of flu. How can we get this girl on date? Nice. So, uh, exactly. I think that's why she brought us to the Imagine it is. Yeah, and on the other side, we wanted to, to like write on the back, and then when they drive, when they're about to drive away, just be like, psych, it's a crack. It's a bypass on people. It's just changed everything to KFC instead of Kentucky Fried Chicken, and so they could backpack a bunch of the bulls actually. Yeah, I, yeah. Well, you know, there's enough in the trash usually on top. Oh, yeah. Times have been changing, though. They've been closing down a bunch of the good ones by the track. Yeah, ramen. These guys are super generous. I give them some chicken. Look at this. Those apples look so 
bright and shiny. They are very shiny apples. They're like those like really white apples when you bite yeah. inside of them. Not like the big. Yeah, you know, I know. They're like I, the little. So you guys are heading off, hitchhiking to Michigan. That's cool. We'll end up at a perfect spot like this, but then like yeah, I mean, we don't really have time. If you got a deadline, freight trains are not the best. Well, anyway, thanks for talking on the yeah, camera here. That's cool. Yeah. sure what these deer's intentions are. Are they trying to sneak in and get on a train here? What are these guys trying to do? This guy's up to no good. Are these guys trying to do something they're not supposed to? Are you guys trying to catch out of this yard? Wow, do not have a natural instinct about it. So this is the westbound Sheridan catch spot here. It's pretty much a total no man's land. You've got no fence, you got, you know, pretty much a wide open area, which is very fortunate. You got no fence going on, you got pretty much just wide open. This is pretty much as nice and pleasant a catch spot as you can get because you've got plenty of space to hide which is just off the property you got basically nobody can see in here i mean look at these houses there's nothing going on here this is probably one of the better hobo spots i've seen you could relax all day here with very minimal worry about the cops or anybody being stressed out and the facts are what i've noticed is in these small towns, like Sheridan, smaller, you know, they really don't care about guys who just want to travel through on a freight train. It's not like we're causing trouble. We're not breaking in. We're not stealing. We're just trying to catch some scenery for free. You know, just getting from point A to point B. The gas prices, they're obscene today. And I don't even think there's any issue here, which I really like. It's one of my favorite yards. This green signal should indicate an imminent approaching westbound. Well, this is the main drag of Sheridan, Saturday at 11 o'clock. And what's kind of making me think is all those new faux country songs talking about Saturday night at the bar in the small town is pretty ridiculous because there's nothing going on here at all. They got murals like this nonsense all over the place, but the reality is there's nothing going on. I'm kind of bored and disappointed that there's like not even anything but a couple dive bars going on right now. So probably gonna head back to the train tracks and get the next train out of here. It's the best solution as soon as you start getting bored. Like Kenny Cheesney and Jason Aldean and those guys, they're all talking about Saturday night at the bar in the small town. Justin Moore, I think his name is. Small town USA. Where is this bar with the cowboys? I think it's all 
contrived nonsense. There's nothing. There's no, where's the good old boys? Where's the rowdiness? There's nothing going on here at all. I mean, you do have a non-stop supply of monster pickup trucks going past, but I guess if you're looking at America and what's going on, that's that country western, you know, rowdy cowboys at the bar thing. I think it's all contrived nonsense because this is as cowboy a town as exists, and I'm not feeling none of that. So it's about, I think it's like 5 p.m. June 15th, this uh, General Manifest freight train has just arrived going east out of Sheridan. And uh, basically it's about as far east as we're gonna go after this, it's gonna be Gillette. So I'm gonna go ahead and board this ride here and then basically it's another 100 miles east and then we'll start heading back. <laughs> Just going to back to our lesson about where cars are going. 1265, you look up that placard and then you notice that it's empty. I knocked on the outside. You've got a decent idea that this isn't just totally a random car anymore. 1265, isopentane, whatever that means. I'm not a chemistry major. I guess that's it for Sheridan. I'll be coming back through here. I may hitchhike back as well. The trains have been kind of slow. So, uh, stove the hobo, getting ready to enjoy a nice afternoon ride through basically totally uninhabited wilderness to Gillette. It's about 100 miles and no roads, no nothing, nothing but pronghorns, bighorn sheep occasionally. Should be cool. Gotta get down, we're going past the yard office here.